Medicosis perfectionalis again, another day, another rheumatology video. In the previous video, I've talked about the joint fluid analysis, how to comment on them and how to understand the difference between inflammatory, non-inflammatory, septic arthritis, and normal. Today, I'll talk about arthropathy and we'll classify arthritis based on many criteria. And with that being said, now let's get started. Here's a quick summary of all of my previous videos in this rheumatology playlist. I've talked about rheumatoid factors and anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide. This is rheumatoid arthritis. Then we have lupus, anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith antibodies, anti-U1 RNP, anti-ribosomal P protein. Then we go to Jogren syndrome, anti-SSA, also known as anti-Rho, anti-SSB, also known as anti law then the HLA-B27, among others. This is the human leukocytic antigen seen in ankylosing spondylitis and other spondyloarthropathies, which can be summarized in the word pair. Psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease-related arthritis, and reactive arthritis. Then this is scleroderma. Look at the skin. Look at the skin. Anti-centromere antibodies, anti-RNA polymerase 3, and anti-scleroderma 70. I've talked about all of these antibodies in individual videos, so please subscribe and save my rheumatology playlist. I know that studying medicine is not fun most of the time, but please remember, wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also love of humanity. We're doing great stuff, guys. We're doing great. As Nietzsche says, he who has a why to live can bear almost anyhow. And Medicosis can say, he who has a why to studying rheumatology can bear almost any struggle. Sorry, Nietzsche. Rheumatology is the scientific study of the flow or the current because they thought back in the day that there are some like fluids floating around and causing joint disease all over the body. It's not actually fluids, kind of O2 antibodies, but it's kind of close. So we're studying rheumatology, which is a wrong name before we begin anything. Okay, hello. Some nomenclature. Arthropathy is the pathology of the arthro, joint disease, joint pathology, arthropathy, arthritis, joint inflammation. Arthralgia, alger means pain, so arthralgia is joint pain. That's why pain medications or painkillers are called analgesics. N in Greek, it means no, no more algesia, no more pain, which is so deep. Rheumatism is any disease with pain and inflammation of joint, muscle, or connective tissue. It con like, includes everything, such as rheumatoid. It's kind of an old name. Nobody uses rheumatism anymore, but it's good to know. Arthritis, joint inflammation, is divided into non-inflammatory arthritis and inflammatory arthritis. So in a sense, osteoarthritis is a misnomer because it ends in arthritis and itis. So itis is inflammation, but it's non-inflammatory. So there is no inflammation in osteoarthritis. We just call it osteoarthritis, but it's not inflammatory. Because you might imagine, oh, it ends in arthritis. Therefore, ESR is going to be high. CRP is going to be high. Shut up. Shut up. No, it's a wrong name. My, my preference would be to call it osteoarthropathy. But nobody listens to medicosis anymore. They just call it osteoarthritis. So let's call it osteoarthritis. Because Harrison, for some reason, knows better. Rheumatological disease can be divided into non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Osteoarthritis is here, rheumatoid arthritis is here. Other diseases such as fibromyalgia, osteoporosis, trauma, neuropathy such as Charcot joint. He was a, he's French. Respect the language. It's not Charcot. It's Charcot. Metabolic alkaptinuria and Wilson's disease. Inflammatory. Rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, seronegative spondylar arthropathies, which are pair psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease-related arthritis, and the reactive arthritis, gout, Jogren, and septic arthritis. What is the name of the crystals in case of gout? Monosodium urate. Never, ever forget that. Based on the number of joints inflamed, we can divide rheumatological disease into monoarthritis, oligoarthritis, and polyarthritis. What do you mean by mono? One, oligo, two to four. Oligo means few. Poly is more than five or equal five. Okay, monoarthritis such as trauma. So let's say that you are a doctor and you have a patient 
she's a lady in her childbearing age, and she says, I have joint inflammation in both knees, both wrists, both ankles, and both elbows. And you say, oh, maybe somebody hit you. Um, stupid. Stupid on steroids. What are you smoking? Monoarticular is one joint. She's complaining of eight joints. And even if you're true and somebody hit her, somebody will hit her symmetrically in both knees, both elbows, both... Shut up. Just shut up. Gout, osteoarthritis, septic arthritis, and Lyme disease. All of them usually involve one joint. In case of gout, it's the first metatarsal. Oligarthritis, 2 to 4. Psoriatic arthritis. Enteropathic arthritis or inflammatory bowel disease arthritis and reactive arthritis. Can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree. Polyarthritis, more than five. Rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Please, please, please never ever forget that. Rheumatoid arthritis is poly. Lupus is poly. So in this case, when I told you about this lady, it's probably rheumatoid or lupus because she had eight joints. Rheumatological disease based on the joint involved can be divided into DIP, MCP, and wrist. First, metatarsal. Okay, DIP. What the flip is DIP? It's distal intraphalangeal joint. What the flip does that mean? Okay, we're talking about joints and not bones. Okay, so here we have the carpal bones, eight nice bones in the wrist. Then we have metacarpal bones here. The joint in between the carpal and the metacarpal is called carpo-metacarpal joint, CMJ. Next, here are the carpal bone, remember? The carpal bones, carpal bones. Then we have, those are the phalanges. Okay, the singular is phalanx and the plurals are phalanges. What's the name of the joint in between the carpal and the phalangeal, or sorry, the metacarpal and the phalangeal? It's called the metacarpo phalangeal joints. The phalangeal joints are not all the same. You have a joint here and you have a joint here. So if this this is joint and this is a joint. We will call this the distal intra phalangeal joint because it's between two phalanx or two phalanges. Then we will call this guy the proximal intra phalangeal joint. Cool. So Diseases involving the distal intraphalangeal joint are the osteoarthritis and PSA. What's PSA? Prostatic specific angina? No, 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 shut up. The S is small. It's not PSA like this, all caps. This is small. This is psoriatic arthritis. Those are non-rheumatoid, of course. So osteo and psoriatic arthritis or psoriatic arthritis involve the DIP. Don't ever forget that. Let's talk about MCP and wrist. Where the flip is the MCP? It's called metacarpophalangeal, between the metacarpal and the phalangeal. So these, these guys, these suckers, these guys, involved in rheumatoid and lupus and CPPPD, which is calcium pyrophosphate dehydrate crystals, also known as pseudogout, which is easier. First, metatarsal joint, gout and osteoarthritis. So the big toe gout and osteoarthritis. So the layman will say, my big toe hurts, but doctor will say, you have inflammation in your first metatarsal joint containing needle-shaped crystals that are negatively birefringent. The gouty attacks are triggered by eating meat and drinking alcohol, you filthy rich. That's why in the past, gout was known as the disease of kings or the royal disease. But now the masses have been lifted up out of abject poverty. Gout can come to anyone. Anyone can get gout today thanks to free market capitalism. By the way, I have Perfectionale's Ultimate Notebook, also known as Pun, about lymphoma. Contains all of the notes about lymphoma condensed together, plus 20 lymphoma cases, plus 25 bleeding cases. You can get them by going to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, and I made a video about them explaining what will you expect. Now, depending on the chronicity of arthritis, we can divide it into acute and chronic. Acute means few days. Okay, when did it start, honey? It started yesterday. This is an acute arthritis. It started 
three days ago, and still acute. Started one week ago, still acute. Chronic started four weeks ago, three months ago. That's a chronic arthritis. Okay, examples of acute arthritis or arthritis, which is a plural of arthritis. Spondyloarthropathies, the pair against psoriatic arthritis and closing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease related arthritis, and reactive arthritis. Crystalline, such as gout and pseudo gout, and uh, uh, pseudo pseudo gout maybe. Septic arthritis, acute rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever, by the way, it's migratory oligo or polyarthritis, also known as fleeting arthritis. Chronic tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, rheumatoid lupus, and mixed connective tissue disease. Based on the symmetry, we have asymmetric and symmetric arthritis. Asymmetric, okay, let me give you a pearl. All of the monoarthritis by definition are asymmetric because if you only involve one joint, monoarthritis, then you can never be symmetrical. This is like fifth grade logic, hello. So osteoarthritis, psoriatic, reactive, crystalline or gout, if it only involves the big toe, by definition it's asymmetric. Septic, if it's only involved like your right knee or your left knee, but only one knee, it's asymmetric. Lyme disease, tuberculosis, sarcoidosis and fungal. Symmetric, usually are O2 antibodies and O2 antibodies don't discriminate. They affect your right knee and your left knee equally, symmetrically, probably simultaneously. Rheumatoid, lupus, psoriatic arthritis, scleroderma, mixed connective tissue disease and viral. My YouTube videos never go viral, but at least they go bacterial. Let's put it all together. Rheumatological disease, non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Example, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. We have the cardinal signs of inflammation. No, it's non-inflammatory. Here we have the cardinal signs of inflammation. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, color, tumor, dollar, functulus. Asymmetric, because it's like tires. You don't wear them symmetrically. It's just wear and tear. Inflammatory, O2 antibodies, don't discriminate. Symmetrical. Non-inflammatory, such as osteo, it's worse in the evening. Why? More wear and tear because as the day progresses, you wear your joint more and more and more, so it's worse in the evening. On the other hand, inflammatory such as rheumatoid is worse in the morning. Why? Because as the day progresses, you're moving and washing out the inflammatory debris. Okay, got it? Non inflammatory arthritis, the ESR and CRP are within normal limit. In other words, the acute phase reactants are normal, but in inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid or lupus or Jogren or gout, ESR and CRP are usually high. Enough is enough. That's it for today. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to my channel and please consider supporting this channel on patreon.com forward slash medicals. I have tons of notes and cases on Patreon. Thank you so much in advance. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.